It's 6 p.m. on a Thursday here in Korea. Welcome to our newscast. I'm Daniel Che. Let us begin with the headlines. Lawmakers elect the main opposition Minju Party's Chung se yun as their new parliamentary speaker, while the deputy speaker post went to members of the other two main political parties. Korea Central Bank takes everyone by surprise with its first rate hike in almost a year. The BOK governor points to considerable downside risks ahead of exports continue their downward slide. Korea Science Ministry announces a five-year plan to boost the country's cybersecurity sector to put a cork on economic losses stemming from related threats. Following a multi-week tug-of-war between the rival parties, the National Assembly has finally selected a new Assembly Speaker and two deputies. Park ji starts us off with the updates from the domestic political realm. Lawmakers elected Chung se yun as their new Assembly Speaker at the first plenary session of the 20th National Assembly on Thursday afternoon. The six-term lawmaker from the main opposition Minju Party will lead the parliament for the next two years. The 65-year-old is a former industry and energy minister and is considered a potential presidential candidate. Chung vowed to do his utmost to regain the public trust. As Assembly Speaker, I will try to regain the public trust through efficient management of political and social conflicts. I will make a parliament that helps the public, not one that burdens them. But I cannot do it alone. I urge my fellow lawmakers to gather their knowledge and wisdom to make a productive parliament. The deputy speaker posts went to Shim jae Char, a five-term Senuri Party lawmaker and former journalist, and Park ju Sun, a four-term People's Party lawmaker and former prosecutor. Korea's main political parties had been locked in battle over the speaker post up until Wednesday, as the speaker enjoys several important rights, including the right to put bills directly up for a vote at plenary sessions without having to go through the deliberation process under certain conditions. The conflict ended when the ruling Senori party yielded the post to the Minju party out of respect to the result of April's general elections when it was stripped of its parliamentary majority. Instead, the ruling party will now chair the influential Judiciary Committee. In all, the Senori party and the Minju party will each chair eight of the 18 committees and the People's Party will chair two. The three parties are scheduled to vote on the candidates Monday. With the speaker post filled, the opening ceremony for the 20th National Assembly will be held later the same day, signaling a fresh start for the new parliament. Park ji Arirang News. The Bank of Korea put an end to almost a year of holding rates. This decision comes as part of the bank's efforts to boost the economy in the face of the government's corporate restructuring drive. Hwang Jie fills us in on the surprise rate cut. It was a bolt out of the blue that few were expecting. The Bank of Korea on Thursday cut its key rate by a quarter of a percentage point to an unprecedented low of 1.25%. The unanimous decision came as the economy has seen its traditional growth engine exports fall sharply for almost a year and a half. We believe there are considerable downside risks in the second half of this year. The slowdown in global trade is greater than we had forecast in April, and downward pressure could mount as the government's corporate restructuring gains momentum. But the top central banker brushed aside speculation that the rate trim is aimed at facilitating the process of corporate restructuring, adding that it was a preemptive move to tackle the low growth trend. And experts say it would have been now or never for Korea's central bank to cut the rate, as the worse than expected U.S. jobs data in May tempered forecasts of a rate hike by the Federal Reserve in June, in return giving leeway for the BOK. Maneuvering the rate against the Fed's interest rate plans has prompted fears of massive capital outflows in emerging markets, and Korea is no exception. 
It's a matter of when, but considering the Fed will likely raise its interest rates in the second half of the year, June may have been the appropriate month for Korea's monetary policymakers to go with a rate cut decision. The governor emphasized, though, a rate cut itself will not put the economy back on track to a solid recovery and that fiscal policy, as well as structural reforms, should also follow. Concern over further exacerbating household debt is another thorny issue that the central bank will have to confront. Despite the potential negative effects of a lower rate, Governor E left the door open for additional cuts, saying all options still remain on the table for possible scenarios ahead. Hong Jie, Arirang News. Meanwhile, North Korea is gearing up for yet another big political gathering. The Supreme People's Assembly will open around a month after the regime's once-in-a-generation Workers' Party Congress, and more changes could be afoot. For details, let's turn to our Connie Kim. North Korea will convene its Supreme People's Assembly later this month as a follow-up to its Workers' Party Congress in May. The North State-run Korean Central News Agency said Thursday that the fourth session of the 13th Supreme People's Assembly will take place on June 29th in Pyongyang. The assembly is the highest branch of state power in North Korea that establishes basic principles for domestic and foreign policy, adopts a state budget, and approves decisions by the state leadership. Many North Korea watchers in Seoul say the meeting is expected to further lay out the details of North Korea's economic and nuclear development plan. They say the fact the meeting has been scheduled a month after the landmark party congress could mean more changes are on the horizon. The Supreme People's Assembly is the first meeting after the party congress. It is significant because the North is expected to conduct a personnel reshuffle that's outside of the Workers' Party. There has also been speculation that Kim Jong-un, who is currently the first chairman of the National Defense Commission, which oversees the nation's armed forces, could change his title as part of his effort to consolidate his role in the long term. He ascended to the position two days after he was made the first secretary of the Workers' Party of Korea in 2012. Seoul's unification ministry has echoed the prediction, and some experts say it's part of Kim's efforts to move away from the military-first policy of his father. Connie Kim, Arirang News. The South Korean government announced a five-year plan to boost the cybersecurity sector, a much-needed move considering the nation's growing dependence on information and communications technology. Kim Ji-yeon introduces us to KICT Security 2020. ICT development has become intertwined with a broad range of civilian sectors, including medicine and traffic. But behind the technological advances are an increasingly broad range of cybersecurity threats. The economic losses stemming from cybersecurity threats in Korea alone are estimated at more than 3 billion U.S. dollars a year, more than double that from natural disasters. To address these issues, the Ministry of Science, ICT and Future Planning has come up with a five-year plan to boost the country's cybersecurity sector. Under its KICT Security 2020 plan, the ministry says it will support industries related to cybersecurity, including the medical, energy, transportation, manufacturing and home appliance sectors, to build up cybersecurity functions during the product or service development stage. The ministry will also devise plans to support the development of smart surveillance cameras, bioforensics and video analysis based on big data in the future. In addition, the ministry will help build up a case security brand for cybersecurity exports to Tanzania, Oman, Indonesia and Costa Rica, deemed as strategically important regional gateways. The ministry believes nurturing the cybersecurity sector, which it views as a new growth engine for the government's Creative Economy Initiative, could help create more than 100 cybersecurity startups by 2020 and produce 19,000 new jobs in the process. It also says the plan could help triple Korea's cybersecurity exports from the current volume to more than 3.9 billion U.S. dollars by 2020. Kim Jeon, Arirang News. Volkswagen is moving ahead with recalls and compensation plans in major markets to remedy the fallout from its emissions cheating scandal. But according to our Kim Min-ji, that hasn't been the case for Korea. Take a look. Volkswagen's so-called dieselgate scandal has sent its car sales downhill in major markets across the world. Sales of Volkswagen cars in the U.S. for one came to almost 28,800 last month, down over 17 percent from a year ago. 
In fact, sales have been on a steady decline since a German car maker admitted to having used a cheat device that manipulates emissions data. But it's a different story in Korea. The number of registered Volkswagen cars came to over 2,300 last month, down about 8% from a year ago. It's still a drop, but a big improvement in comparison to January and February, when it fell 45% and 25% respectively. Sales may be on a recovery track, but the German automakers' recall and compensation plans in Korea have still lagged what's been done in other markets. Korea's Environment Ministry has rejected Volkswagen's plan to recall vehicles in question for a third time, as the German car maker did not admit to using the cheat device. Previously, the plans were rejected for a lack of information. In Germany, however, Volkswagen received approval from authorities to go through with its plan to recall more than 800,000 vehicles, while U.S. authorities have also made progress toward a settlement. In the U.S., for example, sales drop as consumers refrain from buying products from a company deemed unethical. On top of that, due to strict laws, if the matter is not settled quickly, the fines soar as more emissions are emitted. So the car maker does its utmost to settle the issue. But Korea lacks these kind of regulations, so there's no rush. Experts say the Korean government needs to take environmental issues more seriously, as well as take a stronger role in implementing and revamping laws to stop Korean consumers falling victim and promote incentives to get more people to buy eco-friendly cars. Kim min Arirang News. Outside of Korea, four people have been killed and at least 16 injured in Tel Aviv after two Palestinian gunmen opened fire at a market complex. Hwang Ho Jun has more on the attack that marks the beginning of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. Two gunmen killed at least four people and injured several others when they opened fire on a popular open-air market complex in Tel Aviv on Wednesday night local time. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has condemned the attack as a savage crime of murder and terrorism. We're going to take the necessary steps to uh, attack the attackers and to defend those who need to be defended. The Israeli government has revoked thousands of travel permits for Palestinians from the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, seeking to travel to Israel to visit family during Ramadan. Officials say the shooters, both 21 years old, are from a Palestinian village in the West Bank and entered Israel illegally. Palestinian media reports have identified the shooters as Muhammad and Khalid Mahamra. The two had disguised themselves by dressing as ultra-Orthodox Jews and posed as customers at a restaurant. They were disarmed by security forces. One was arrested and the other was shot and has been hospitalized. The Palestinian Islamist group Hamas has claimed responsibility for the attack. It shared a cartoon of a traditional Ramadan treat being stuffed with a bullet with the caption, Tel Aviv Operation. Hailing the shootings as a, quote, heroic operation, Hamas also promised, quote, the Zionists more surprises during the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. In response, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon denounced the shooting in an official statement and criticized Hamas leaders for glorifying those who commit such heinous acts. Washington also expressed condemnation in the statement and said that cowardly attacks against innocent civilians can never be justified. Hong Woo-jun, Arirang News. Let's turn our focus to the tech realm now. Samsung Electronics is expected to see strong sales of its Galaxy S7 series in the second quarter of this year. According to industry sources, on Thursday, Korea's top tech firm is forecast to sell about 15 million units of its latest smartphone model in the April to June period. Local securities companies upgraded their second quarter earnings outlook for Samsung, predicting its operating profit to soar to nearly 6.7 billion U.S. dollars. Analysts say the profit rate of Samsung's mobile segment is set to rise from 15.8 percent to over 17 percent in the second quarter on the back of strong sales of the Galaxy S7 series. Today is Tano in Korea. It's when villagers in the country's traditionally agrarian society would gather to pray for a good harvest. Though it's no longer celebrated nationwide in modern Korea, an urban, technologically advanced economic powerhouse, there is one festival that keeps the tradition alive every year. Lee ji takes us there. Koreans once celebrated Tano to mark the end of the harvest season. It was a sacred day when people prayed to the gods for a good harvest and peace for local farming communities. 
Korean celebrated Tano, which fell on the fifth day of the fifth month on the lunar calendar, with festivals across the country. Today, one of the few surviving festivals is the Gangneung Tanoja Festival. It was designated as one of Korea's masterpieces of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity by UNESCO in 2005. Puppet shows and performances of farmers' music, or dongak in Korean, give visitors a chance to experience a wide range of cultural traditions. The Nongak performance was very enjoyable, especially the dancers shaking their heads. It's nice that the festival shows a lot of Korea's traditions. One of the festival's most renowned traditions is the kut, or shamanic rituals. There will be performances of more than 15 rituals this year, and each one offers prayers for something different, such as an abundant harvest or a family's well-being. I've been enjoying the traditional side of the festival. Uh, particularly the mediums today and uh, as my mother-in-law has taught me uh, the reason for the festival is, is about the um, God coming down from the mountain and everyone praying to him. This year's festival also features a number of performances by international groups. Chinese performers from the city of Jingzhou are back after several previous festival appearances and for the first time, the French group Le Poing Along Song brought its repertoire of folk songs and dances to Gangneung. Through these various international performances, the festival committee hopes to boost the exchange of cultural programs and introduce the Gangneung Ganuja Festival to the world. Lee ji Arirang News, Gangneung. That brings us to the end of this hour's newscast, and as always, thank you for watching.